Hi, this is Jay Cho. Uh, we're going to talk about dog bite today. So this is my webinar series where I talk about one area of law and just kind of like explain uh, one of the important things to consider and empower you with the information. Now, this disclaimer is this is not supposed to be a legal advice, but information only. So I'm just trying to give you as much information so that you can make that decision. Uh, you know, if if you if you actually can, you know, run into these legal issues. So today it's a dog bite. And I think I um, named this webinar as Who Let the Dogs Out? Remember that old song uh, a while ago? And uh, I think my kids are now playing that song at home. It's just, it's very fun to listen to. But it actually goes well with what it is. You know, we're letting dogs out right now. It's a weather's getting better. People are walking in the park. Uh, and then I see that we are getting bombarded with the calls, people with incidences on both sides, actually, you know, people, dog owners saying that, oh, my dog bit somebody, uh, or uh, from the victim's perspective where I was bitten by a dog. And most of the time, whole, you know, luckily it's not a serious, serious, in, you know, cases, they just have puncture wounds. I'm just afraid of dog, but I've dealt with in my career, very, very severe dog bite cases where like chunk of their skin was beaten off, which is very severe. Or I had like small kids attacked by a dog and got, uh, you know, a lot of injuries, uh, you know, had to get a plastic surgeon stuff. Uh, so let's talk about this. And, 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 you know, as I was researching this and try to prepare for the series and I, I came across this, uh, you know, article boy 14, this was May 17 was beaten by a dog on a school prop, a school property. And it was about May 12, about 6 p.m. Unfortunately, the police said that neither dog or nor its owner has been uh, located or identified, which is very unfortunate. Uh, and then I think this probably related incidences, uh, I, I think the same incident that that happened uh, on the same property you talk about, uh, you know, it's a severe in nature dog attack and you have to, sh you know, should reach out to Toronto police uh, or the animal uh, services. Usually you have to contact if that dog bite happens, if you just, I think it actually says here as well, you should actually uh, Toronto Animal Services or uh, uh, or Toronto Police. And I would usually recommend, and here's what I usually recommend, you know, if it's um, say like a motor vehicle accident, if it's a dog bite uh, or slip and fall, make sure that you are safe. Make sure that you are safe, that you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, um, serious uh, injuries. Um, sorry about that. I'm just going to turning off some of these notifications now. Okay. So without further ado, let's go in. So I'm going to talk about some of the do's and don'ts of, of, uh, dog bite and talk about basic law. And maybe there's a, some of the questions I got from, um, the people. So I'm just going to answer those questions as well. So let's talk about, okay, let's see. Um, so let's talk about do's, what you should do after the dog bite. So first, seek medical attention, especially for puncture wounds or if you are unsure about the dog's vaccination history. So um, uh, what that means is, uh, you know, like when you get a get beaten by a dog, first of all, make sure that you're safe. You know, like you don't, like just make sure that, you know, dog is not there. Um, and then, you know, just keep a record, uh, you know, just go to an emergency. I think that's the first thing I would do. Go to walk-in or emergency. Just make sure that, uh, you know, you get proper vaccinations, you know, and it actually goes into, um, you know, like, you know, it shows up in a don'ts, but don't assume that dogs are fully vaccinated. Uh, most of the dogs are, but you, you're not sure, especially when you cannot locate the owner or the dog owner or, or, or they don't have a history, right? So, so do seek medical attention. I usually recommend people to go to ER right away. Um, you, you know, you don't have to, you know, you could go to walk-in, but you know, just go to ER and get vaccinated right away. Uh, second of all, collect information and evidence at the scene, uh, such as ask for witness information. If there's any other witnesses, uh, make sure that you take photos of the location. Uh, and if there's like a CCTV footage, like, you know, surveillance camera, do make sure that you get that as well. Okay. Uh, it's very important that you, you, you preserve the evidence, but most importantly, get the information of the owner. So you want to make sure that you want the owner's information, because if you don't know the owner, you can't really make a claim. So just make sure that you get the owner's information. Um, you know, like, and then also take pictures of your wounds, right? And then uh, make sure that, you know, you, you have pictures of 
right after the you know the puncture wounds because uh, scars do heal, the injuries do heal. So at the end, you might have like the little two puncture wounds, but it could have been very severe because there's some of these puncture wounds are borderline. Should we, you know, like an ER doctor is saying, should I stitch it or should I leave it as is? Uh, sometimes it's they leave it as is because it's hard to stitch it, not because it's not big. Okay. Uh, yeah, here. So, uh, you know, you said proceed with caution. You know, number is what I'm talking about, number four here. I mean, I'm just looking for my mouse here. Yeah. So if you can see it, so proceed with caution and avoid making assumptions. So that's what it goes with number one, because you don't want to assume that dogs are fully vaccinated, right? You just want to make sure that, uh, you know, assume that it's not and just, just go talk to the doctor and just make sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're fully, uh, covered, right? So just make sure that you want to be, make sure, you know, you really want to make sure that you do not assume anything and get, get vaccinated. Um, you know, number five, I mean, you know, just self, it's a little self-serving, but again, you don't know whether it's going to impact you. Right? A lot of people think that, ah, dog bite, you know, like I was bitten by a dog, it's two puncture wounds. Now, I, what I've seen is, uh, you know, physical injuries are one thing and they do heal, but there's this psychological components where uh, you, y you know, you start getting anxious around the dog. You know, you love dogs, but now you, you, you don't like dogs. You, you can't walk in the park alone. Or if you were uh, bitten by a dog, a lot of cases were like, you know, you're waiting in the elevator. So dog suddenly opens the door, dog jumps, jump out at you. Now, you may not be have been bitten by a dog, but you fell backwards. And I've a I've case, few cases right now that people fell backward and fractured their, uh, their neck, fractured their, uh, you know, um, their lower back. There's a compression fractures. There's a burst fractures, right? So um, then you're afraid of getting onto the elevator or getting off the elevator. Uh, you're just afraid of around the dogs, right? So psychological impairment is is one of the huge um, issues because it's you can't see it but it's there right so you know th these are some of the you know do so you summarize it seek medical attention uh, do collect information especially especially the owner's information if you don't have owner's information you can't um, you know you can't give it to the police you can't give it to animal services. Uh, they need to do further investigate because they want to make sure that first you can, you know, from my perspective as a lawyer, do you know, can I claim because if we have an injury that we should, you need to be able to claim. Second of all, the uh, Toronto police or uh, when the police services or any of the services of eco, you know, each municipality need to be able to contact the owner and say, well, is this dog fully vaccinated? They could also uh, uh, get like a muzzle order. So they could actually put a muzzle on the dog. Or if it's a consecutive, it, this dog is tendency of attacking people, they could essentially eventually put the dogs down, right? So uh, that's this important consideration. Now let's talk about don'ts, right? So what you should not do. Um, let's just, just see. Oh, it's it. So here's some, some of the things you should not do. Don't chase the dog. Um, you know, if you're not sure, don't try to run after the dog. Make sure that you're safe. It, you know, goes back to my, um, you know, my first point, right? Just don't chase after the dog. I think it showed up in my second point is, uh, is don't assume the dog is healthy or that the incident was a one-time mistake. Uh, you should, you know, dog, I've seen cases where a dog, you know, like attack once and, and runs backwards, right? Just keep your guards up and don't assume that, first of all, Dog will not attack you again. Make sure that you're safe. You know, you are in the car, or you're behind the fence. Uh, you you have something to cover you. You know, if dogs attack you, like a bag, you could actually start, uh, you know, like a start, uh, you know, uh, you know, put your bag in front of the dog and let the dog bite that. Second of all, don't assume that dogs are fully vaccinated. So just want to make sure that you are, uh, you know, you get proper vaccination and medical attention uh, afterwards. Um, the third one is don't underestimate the potential value of the dog bite claim. And again, I've seen cases where beaten by a dog, you know, didn't think about much and then suddenly had a PTSD or a mental breakdown. Um, I, I've cases, one person who was casually taking a walking at the park during the, uh, during the business meeting, she was working at home and beaten by a dog and it wasn't a crazy attack. So she was just walking. At, at first, she didn't even know that she was beaten by a dog. And, she, you know, something pulled her and looked at her. Dog was, you know, like, uh, you know, trying to munch at her. I tried to go back for the second time. And the dog going to pull the dog back. But all of a sudden, she had a completely mental breakdown. And uh, we settled, I settled her case around 
quarter million uh i think 225 but yeah it's like i mean it was just if you look at it she she have a very minor puncture wounds but she had a complete mental breakdown so don't underestimate that but if you wait it for two years or beyond um and then you know then you can't claim right so just make sure that you uh you just you know just speak to a doctor you know make sure that you are uh, safe uh, mentally you're okay you can take a walk at a park by yourself you're okay with you're around the dog you may be nervous but just make sure that you are not uh you know you, you know you're okay right so basically that's what it is um so what do you have to do after the dog bite let me just uh, pull this again um so these are the news that i talk about okay so there's you know once a dog bite happens i'm just looking at the tr city of toronto but you know new market uh you know in Richmond, Elvon, you know, city of Hamilton, London, you know, Sarnia, anywhere, uh, Barry, there's animal control, right? So first of all, I would call the police right away. Just make sure that you're safe, right? So, and then they come in and then they usually will contact the animal enforcements, right? So you could, uh, there's for city of Toronto, I think there's a number here. You could call the 311 or that number, but uh, what it is is that police will be contacted and they'll come in, they'll do the investigation, take the numbers down, they'll call the, and then they'll call the animal services. Animal services will come in because they're the one who actually controls the, um, the dogs according to this Dog Liability Act. We actually have a law, legislation deals with a dog bite. That's how many dog bites we get, right? Because actually we, we, we have a law dedicated to this. Now, um, so do contact them and they will investigate. They'll, most importantly, they'll let you know whether or not this dog has a, um, uh, a vaccination history or this dog has attacked any other people in the past, which is a big factor. So do make sure, you know, contact them and they'll take care of the investigation. They'll do the statement with you. Uh, and then it actually helps the claim down the road because exactly down to the point, uh, you know, as to what happened. And it also tried to identify the witnesses, you know, liabilities. Um, now, dog bite, you know, there's other factors like provocation. Did you hit the dog? You know, did you try to uh, try to pat the dog or did you try to approach the dog in a certain way? But that doesn't, you know, that goes to the damages, but the dog on owner, doesn't matter what you did, it's still liable, right? It's like a, it's like a parking ticket, like you're liable. Right, it's like a highway traffic at you. It's like a traffic ticket. It's a strict liability. You know, that's a legal term. Strict liability. They're just liable, and it goes to um, you know whether they have a defense to their uh, their liability. Like to you know, so if you own a dog, you're a hundred percent liable. And then you know, if you there's a provocation, you try to you know, if there's something to provoke the dog. Then it goes to the damages where it actually reduces the damages from hundred percent down to 80, 50, 30. Uh, whatever the percentage is okay so let's talk about some of the questions that i um that was raised um i'm just gonna pause a little bit and just give you know just raise those questions okay so uh let's talk about the q a's um you know hopefully by the time we finish q a most of your questions are uh, answered um, let me just fix my microphone here um so first will the dog be put down after numerous complaints yes i you know i think usually the first one they'll let it go second one they may do the uh, muzzle order uh but if the dog actually severely injure somebody like kill somebody or severely injure someone and if they think that it's a danger to the public they may put down the dog and i don't think they do it just because it happened once unless that dog actually killed somebody uh you know there's actually specifically bylaw against pit bulls right pit bulls actually very uh it's a it's like a high it's like a very uh vicious dog because it's a you know like it's a it's a it's a very dangerous breed right so uh if but um, I think other than that, it, they will um, they will they will not put down a dog just because it happened once. Actually, sorry, um, just go back. Uh, will the owner if if the owner refuses to provide info, can I press charges? Uh, again, pressing charges or not pressing charges is up to the police, so it's not up to you. Uh, but if they refuse to provide information, the police may uh, I think um, you know uh, give a bylaw tickets, uh, but they should cooperate. Uh, but, you know, at least you have to, 
with every means that you have, try to follow the dog owner and try to uh, uh, locate the dog owner's uh, information. We'll just call the police right away so that, you know, they could come in and collect that information. So as long as the when police gets the information, we can get that. We could actually request the investigation. Animal services will be uh, given the information. They'll do the further investigations. We could get that information. So uh, make sure that you follow the owner or, you know, somehow, you know, get witnesses information, try to where, find out where about of the dog, dog owners. Um, so, uh, the neg because it goes to this one, what are the most crucial information you should gather as soon as you are out of danger is the information of dog owners, right? We had a serious cases where people have bitten, you know, numerous, you know, surgeries, the dog owner, uh, didn't have an insurance or the dog uh, owner, uh, we couldn't identify dog owners, then there's no case. So, you know, we can't sue anybody. It's because this is not a motor vehicle accident where you get your insurance company or government insurance company will compensate you. It's none of those. You have to, uh, you know, uh, claim against a third party, right? Um, you know, so that, that goes this question is if the third party dog owner does not have an insurance, then you, you have no claim. Uh, now the next one is if the dog has more injuries than me, is it still a viable claim? Yeah. If, as long as you have uh, injuries, you are self defending yourself, you know, you in, 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 in the process, you, uh, injured the dog, but I mean, you are trying to save yourself. So I, I, or yourself or your loved ones, uh, you know, if my kids are being attacked by a dog, I'll do anything to, uh, to protect my dog, you know, sorry, not my, not my dog, my kids. Right. So, uh, so that's the case, even your dog, right. I mean, when another bigger dog try to attack your dog, you will try to, uh, protect your dog with any means. Right. Uh, but the, you know, what compensation is there for dog bites? I'm look, I'm looking at this question right here. If you can see that, uh, are vet bills paid? So I had a cases where, you know, dog beaten by another dog and the dog owner also beaten by the other dog, the, you know, dog died, but there's a v bill for like, you know, like, I don't know, 10,000, 20,000 in that scenario. Yes. You could get the out of pocket expenses, your injuries, and, um, you know, your mental shock. I mean, you lost your, your dog. You know, some people consider their dog as their pet, not only their pet, but their, their children. So you lost something, you know, you, 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 you lost your member of the family. I remember I had a, like a small dog. I had her for 18 years. So when she died, I felt like my younger sister died. Right. So, you know, that, that's what it is. So yes, that, that bills can be paid. Uh, and then the next one. Can I get compensated even if I'm not bitten but was mentally shocked? Yes. Uh, you know, one of the biggest component of the dog bite is um, mental. There's a physical and psychological. Also, like I said, like I think I mentioned in the video, in, in the series, webinar series, that even if you're not bitten by a dog, but the dog jumped on you, you fell backwards, or you were trying to run run away from it and by hit, hit, hit by a dog, uh, then you still have a viable claim. So I had a case, uh, I, I don't think it was, I, I think it was my case. Uh, a North Korean person was running away from CBSA, like a border services. And while he was running away, he was struck by a car. And uh, the question was, is this a motor vehicle accident? And uh, yes, it was. And then there was a claim against CBSA because he was he was running away from CBSA and they, you know, indirectly, directly caused a car accident. It was a severe car accident. So he actually was seriously injured. So same thing, if you're running away from the dog and try to climb over a fence, you fell and you say you fracture your risk. Yes, the dog owner will be uh, liable for any chain reaction, anything that caused by, you know, his or her dog. And then that person should be liable for everything. And usually the home insurance of that dog owner will respond. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, out of this whole series and you, you, you get much information and, you know, whatever information you need it. So, uh, just to recapture, you know, make sure that you seek medical attention, make sure you're out of danger, call the police or animal services as soon as possible. Also retain the information, take a picture of your wounds, take a picture of your surroundings, take a picture of the dog, take a picture of the owner. Uh, you know, whatever you can and get the information of the owner. That's probably the most important thing out of it. Once you're out of danger, you need to make sure that who the owner is, right? Uh, the owner of the dog. So we can uh, maybe make a claim against them. So that's one of the most important things. 
Um, and then, you know, the injuries, mental shock, uh, you know, uh, derivative claim where, you know, it directly not beaten by a dog, but you running away, you got hurt. Yes, that's. Now, how long does it take? Uh, it will take, it is a civil claim. So I would say usually it takes between, I would say eight months to a year and a half. As, you know, I, you know, if the bigger the case, longer it takes. I think the case that I got for a quarter million, that took me about two years because, you know, we needed to see how much you recover or the person recovers. And um, uh, the, the, what are the range of damages? I mean, the case law in Ontario ranges from 5,000 to, you know, like sky's the limit. I mean, I, I had one case, I, I got quarter million. I had many cases, I got like 5,000, 15,000, 30,000, depending on the um, damages. But, it, you know, puncture one's not worth a lot, but the mental shock and the income loss. So I had a many cases where the um, the people that I represented were the, um, were the cannot post workers. They go deliver the mail and beat my dog and they couldn't work for a few days. They couldn't go back to work because the mental shock or PTSD, it worth a lot, right? Because you, you couldn't work for one year. That's a $50,000. And again, it has to be documented. There has to be proper evidence from a, like a mental psychologist, psychotherapist to your family doctor. But if are properly documented, yes, there could be you know, damages, out-of-pocket expenses. You spend $10,000 for, uh, you know, psychotherapy or $10,000 for veterinarian bills. Yeah, sure. That could all be added into the claim. Okay. Um, I actually prepared something for you. Uh, you know, somewhere down in the link, you should find the link for a PDF file called the do's and don'ts of, um, uh, you know, for dog bites. So hopefully this little like, uh, you know, pamphlet that you could just take and then, you know, keep for yourself. Uh, you know, you could also, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you could uh, go to this site uh, or call this number. Let me pull that up. So when you actually Google, um, let's just show you here, dog by claim that our website comes up here. Um, and then you could just you could put your information in here or call this number uh, to, uh, you know, to get connected to one of our intake coordinators. Um, my amazing clients are giving me the uh, the the Google reviews. Uh, yeah, so just you know, if you could just uh, you know call this number or go to this website, or just make sure that you click below um, to uh, to get that uh, dog bite do's and don'ts um, uh, little information sheet for your future reference. Great, thanks a lot. So I look forward to see you again in my other webinar series, and then uh, hopefully you have a wonderful day and just you know keep safe. Uh, you know during the uh, summertime when you actually go out. Uh, take a nice walk and make sure that you are safe, um, you know, against these uh, unforeseen incidences. Great. Thank you. Bye.